I'm here with Joe Rotella, and Joe, you're going to teach us how to make this awesome clock. Yeah, and it's out of an old album, a 33, a really a old 30, album. I don't even know what that is, a 33. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're actually going to use a technique called a resin pour. Okay. And I'm using a two-part reactive compound. One is a hardener and one is the resin. Now in advance, I went online and used a calculator to determine how much we need. And the key part here is really measuring the right amount. I need... Can you just weigh it? You can't. This is fluid ounces. It's not the same as weight. So you're just looking at the markings so on the cup to I make am. sure that it's absolutely perfect. Mixing one to one. Exactly, one to one. Just be sure you read the product's directions. And these bottles, when I touched them, they're a little bit warm to the touch, which is perfect. Sometimes if it's in a cold space, you'll want to put these in some warm water. Just set them in there for like five to ten minutes just to warm up the product. That's one of the reasons you'll get a cloudy pour is if <clears throat> you don't measure it right and it's not the right temperature. So now I have three so ounces, I hope, one to each. one, the liquid is warm, you have it in two separate cups. Now, why can't you put them both in the same cup at the same time? You're unlikely to then measure the right amount. So okay. I'm gonna pour the hardener now into the resin. And Could you pour the resin into the hardener or it has to be the other way? It really should be this way. And I'm not a chemist, so I don't know why. I wish I knew. <laughs> And you just, you just follow the instructions. That's what I do sometimes. I'm like, I don't know the reason why. I'm just following and the instructions. <clears throat> these cups have straight sides, and I'm using a stir stick that has a straight edge so that I can scrape around the edge and occasionally scrape the stick. And I need to do this now for two minutes. Okay, so you're just going to stir for two minutes. So I've been scraping the sides as we go and scraping the stir stick. Now, this has been two minutes. And this requires a secondary mix. So what we're gonna do is take a brand new cup, pour the whole thing into that brand new cup, use a new stir stick, and stir in here for one minute. And maybe while we do that, you can help me get everything else together. Yeah, so I have all these little cups, which are just plastic cups that have been cut down. And then you can use really any acrylic paint that you have. And you know, I'm using metallic paints, plain paints, fabric paints, as long as it's acrylic, it's okay. Correct, and then if you're just using a pigment powder, you don't have to worry about that one to 10 ratio, but anytime you're adding a liquid in here, we have to pay attention to that. So this has been another minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this resin into the paints that you Oops, have ready. I think I may have added too much paint. Nah, we'll no, make up for we're it. Gonna, we're gonna make it work. We'll be okay. I like it when you say that we're gonna make it work. So I'm gonna add resin to each one of these. Okay. And then we can also add just a couple drops of silicon oil. It could be silicon oil like treadmill oil, sewing machine oil. So um, just a can, couple drops of this. Just a couple drops. Okay. This and feels like chemistry to me, Joe, and I want to make sure is. that I have everything right. Now, how can you tell, like, if your ratio is off, will there be a consistency or something like that that you'll notice that is funky? You know, if you're nervous the first few times, I would put stuff in your cups, put water in your cups, and mark, you know, one amount and then ten times that and then you'll have a good gauge. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start stirring these. I think you need okay. a couple drops in there. I and count you, each drop, one, you can, two, you're three. You're doing an excellent job. And as we stir these, so make I'm sure you use a different too. stick for each color. Okay. And I can see that without mixing, the paint does not want to get together with the resin. You gotta, you gotta push them both together. So now I know you said to me that I, I like shiny things, which is why I'm using this gold metallic, but you said we can add even more glitz to it. We can, once it's poured, we're gonna add some glitter, diamond dust. Uh, Will anything be okay in resin? Can you add beads, <clears throat> can you, you add? You can, just be careful that it has to be perfectly dry. There are people who talk about adding you know, wet wood shavings and things like that. If it's not totally dry, that moisture is gonna impact whether or not the resin hardens. And while you're mixing, I'm just gonna start pouring on my surface. Meaning you wouldn't wanna put in like a fresh leaf because no. it's not totally dry, but a dried leaf. So I'm just pouring some out. I'm gonna put the cups down. Okay. Looks like this gold is ready to go. It is ready to go. I'm gonna keep mixing and get them all ready for you. 
So are you are you is there any rule about how you're mixing? Are you thinking in a particular order? Are you trying to make a pattern? Are you not trying to control it? Are you trying to keep it in a certain area? Or you know, mean? I wish you could say you know oh, I know exactly what I'm doing. I've got perfect control. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to happen. I'm trying to go for like a geode or an agate well, shape. You know, I have to argue, I think that creativity and control do not always go together. And I think it's a great idea to do these techniques that let you, or really force you to let go of some of that need to control it and just sort of accept whatever happens. So you can see I'm just pouring it around the edges. In this case, I'm just keeping to that shape. I'm going to get some purple. Let's add that in the middle of the gray. These cups I like because I can kind of squeeze it. I noticed that they were very soft. And then I can make a tinier spout, like if I want a little oh, tiny for a line. detail. That's really cool. So why are we pouring black onto black? Because that's the color I just well, mixed. Well, I want the surface to be the same height all the way around. I want it to be smooth. Oh, so even if you just want the black of the record to show, you really want to use the resin yep. so that it's not all bumpy and odd. Now, you can use your stir sticks, just keep your colors together. Would you like the black, black one? There you go. And let's just get Scrape some of that little goodness out of there. You never really are going to make exactly the right amount, so sometimes I'll have CDs or other things that I want to coat with resin handy. Just so, you can so just that I pour can for when you pour. have access. And I'm trying to get it to flow over the edge. They call it a flood coat. Mm, so it's kind of like when you're doing a cake or something and you want it to go right on over. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is, since I'm wearing gloves, oh, I, can, yeah. I can tilt it. You can touch it. I can touch it if I want, because I'm not worried about my hands. Right. I can, oh, I like that drizzle through like it. That drizzle? That's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and just tilt a little bit. Get it to flow over the edge. You want to get some colors ready. Oh, I'm going to get some sparklies ready, baby. I love sparklies. Now I'm trying to tilt. And now I see why you needed the newspaper. See how it's moving? I do. And it's making it almost marbly. Now, is there any rule before I drop nope, these sparklies in? drop some in, in there. Little magical fairy dust here. You know, if you want some real precise movement, you can use a straw. Mm. Now, I know you told me that there's a way that we can use heat to create bubbles. We can. So I've got, I'm going to take my glove off here. The heat, we're not really really using the heat per se as the carbon dioxide. Okay. So I'm gonna light my little torch, keep it a, oh, four to six inches away. Because you don't wanna melt the record. Can you see little things popping in oh, there? Oh, I can. See the pops? Yeah. So that's taking out all the bubbles. So you're and taking out the bubbles. You're not creating bubbles. You're making them go away so that you get a yep. nice smooth. And I have a little piece here, it didn't flow. So now I'd probably come back and check on this every five to ten minutes to and see if there's any to new pop bubbles. bubbles. And when I'm all done, the dried version. The dried version I have right here. So cool. And look at the color. It's amazing. And if you look back at the finished clock, I would love to hang that in my house. Thanks cool. so much, Joe. Thank you.